So we're back again, folks. Everybody saw the debate last night between J.D. Vance and Walls, and I thought it went actually pretty good myself. Uh, there were a few things, though, that I want to talk about. And the thing that came back to me, the recurring theme through this whole thing, was how the Republicans largely, folks, are revisionist. When something doesn't go quite the way they like, they, they end up revising it. You know, we know for a fact that J.D. Vance was for a nationwide abortion ban, but last night he said he wasn't. And there's several different other things that they go through, and they, they get in front of these podcasts where they are talking to their audience of conservatives, right? You know, that that pigeonhole group that they can say anything to. And they'll say things, but when they get in front of the microphone in front of the millions of Americans, they pull back from that. They try to make themselves seem less weird, and they try to revise history. But before we get there, folks, I've got to talk about this. So Melania Trump came out with a tweet this morning on X, and she has this necklace that she's selling. It is called the Embrace Boldness. She says, Embrace Boldness in Your Style This Season with the Vote Freedom Necklace, which features the iconic Lady Liberty. A tribute to America's enduring commitment to freedom, this piece is a statement of pride and empowerment. And you can go to usamemorabilia.com. And there it is. It's a gold-plated, I might add, necklace. And the whole thing is she's trying to get you to display your pride and, and show your empowerment, but at the same time make her a little bit richer because she's asking $175 for it, which is a joke. So, I mean, would anybody really want to pay $175 for a piece of plated jewelry like that? I mean, is 175 bucks? Well, you could save some to 5000 by just buying the watch. Yeah, and Trump is selling the watches, right? Correct. How many of those have you bought, Jenny? Uh, just quite a few, you know, to interchange with each outfit. Yeah, right. No, no, I have not bought a watch. But what about, would you be maybe up for the Vote Freedom Liberty necklace? I think it's absurd. Yeah. I don't even think Melania is wearing the thing, actually, if, if you want and, to know the truth. And honestly, do we really know who she is? We've never seen her, except for a handful of times when um, Trump was president in office. Yeah, where is Melania? She yeah. she doesn't want Who to be she? seen. Who is this person? She doesn't want to be seen with Trump. I don't know what's going on. I mean, she, she enjoys Mar-a-Lago and all the trappings of Mar-a-Lago, but when it comes time to get out there and stump with her husband, you know, she's nowhere to be seen. I don't know what's going on. I'm not saying that anything nefarious is going on, but it's just the facts. We don't see it's her. It's just weird. We don't know where she is. So when you talk about revisionist history, you got to play this clip this morning from Donald Trump. So he's saying on this podcast that his economy was so good in 2020 when Americans were in food lines and he had the worst jobs record since the Great Depression. So let's just play this because this sort of typifies what they do. We know it was abysmal. You know, keep in mind, Donald Trump was talking about using bleach, you know, during COVID and all of this other BS. And I mean, it was just a nasty scary time for all of America. And he's painting it to be just like the golden years. Here he is. Making it great again. I had that, I had the country going just prior to COVID coming in at a level that nobody had ever seen. And even if you go all four years, it was so good that even with that <laughs> terrible so interruption that just destroyed the world, we had the greatest four years. The economy was so great. The job numbers were the best ever, etc. <laughs> No, they weren't. The job numbers sucked. <laughs> the economy was sucking wind. That's revisionism. When you get somebody that comes out and says, you know, I don't quite like the way that whole thing went with COVID. You know, there's a lot of, there were a lot of problems with that. It could be problematic for my election. Let's just kind of repaint that whole occurrence. You know, let's just make it look really good. Another thing that J.D. Vance did last night was he talked about the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, the tax cuts for the rich, also known as the tax cuts for the rich that Donald Trump passed back in 2017. And he kind of snuck in there that those tax cuts actually help the middle class. And, and that is revisionist history. You know, he's trying to revise it again. You know, when you, when you've done something that clearly benefits the most wealthy in the United States. And I mean, that's been documented. You can go out to AI, Google, you know, any search engine of your choice, and it will pull the results that confirm, you know, that that Tax Cut and Jobs Act really did just enrich the most wealthy of Americans. But yet he had the audacity to say 
that it actually helped the middle class. And what he's talking about there is trickle-down economics, which we know doesn't work. And that's the idea that you can enrich the richest of Americans, and by making the richest Americans rich, that will trickle down to you, right, the little guy. And it doesn't work that way, right? No, I mean, don't it, even get me started on tariffs. No, it, it's, it's insane. I mean, the whole economic notion that you can enrich the upper class and that will benefit you is... Is, is just ludicrous. And it's been proven time and time again that it, it clearly doesn't work. And then we talked about a little bit, we touched on the fact that J.D. Vance said that he never supported a nationwide abortion ban when he clearly did. Yeah, that's a load of crap. That It's, it's ludicrous. So they get on these podcasts and things like this and they say whatever they want, but then they think nobody's listening and then they come out and say, no, I never supported a nationwide <laughs> abortion ban when they clearly did that's trying to revise things in your favor when you figure out oh my gosh people are mad because i said that i'll just say that i never said it that's an attempt at revisionism he did this too he said that donald trump did you hear that last night where he said donald trump saved obamacare when donald trump did nothing more than he tried to kill it exactly repeatedly tried to kill it Time and time again. I mean, again, go out to Google, go out to Yahoo, go out to any search engine uh, that you choose, and you will get the facts on this, that Donald Trump did nothing more than try to choke Obamacare. And in fact, the Republicans themselves, 99% of the Republicans tried to choke Obamacare by voting 59 times to repeal it. Now it's it's something that's actually recognized as a part of the fabric of America. But yet Donald Trump, He's got concepts right now that he's going to challenge Obamacare with, you know, despite Correct. the fact that Obamacare is, is one of those things that's endemic, you know, and that all Americans support, you know, generally, there are a few who don't, but generally most Americans support Obamacare and they realize that it's helping Americans, it's helping poor Americans. It's not just helping the poor Americans, it's helping the middle class Americans. And by doing that, we're building America up. But the audacity to say that Donald Trump saved Obamacare, you know, the only person, and I said this in a tweet yesterday, the only person that really saved Obamacare was John McCain when he gave the thumbs up. I mean, that man saved, literally, you could make the argument that John McCain saved <clears throat> Obamacare. And then the last thing here, folks, is that that whole thing, did, Jenny, did you hear when he said something about the, he asked you know, Walls asked Vance, did Donald Trump lose the election? Right. And what did he say? He he couldn't answer the question. He said, no, we're going to look forward, we're going to look forward. And he's like, I asked you a question. Right. And he, he couldn't, he wouldn't admit it. He just wouldn't do it. And, <clears throat> you know, as we've said before, I mean, democracy is is something that we can't fool around with. I mean, you can't, you can't come out and just say, oh, I'm going to hold this in my back pocket and say that, you know, the I can't agree that elections are free and fair because I want to hold this in my back pocket so that if they go through this election, they can pull that back out and say, hey, look, yeah. you know what? We think you guys cheated when they have no substance and nothing of any consequence that they can point at other than something they pulled out of their back pocket and said, you know what? This is not a free and fair election. They want to retain that in this election that's coming up so that they can pull it back out of their pocket and say, hey, guess what, folks? I never said 2020 was fair, and this one wasn't fair either. I mean, it's just a, that is an attack on democracy, and that's that's the kind of thing that um, I think most Americans at the end of the day will look back on it in disgust. I mean, if you can't have a free and fair election, I mean, can we really have an America at that point? I mean, if you can't if you can't just acknowledge the simple fact that we do have free and fair elections, uh, what's left? I mean, at the end of that. So, I mean, that's another attempt to sort of revise the reality of history. And, you know, rather than tweet something out, um, I thought it was best just to kind of go through and show you exactly how Republicans are revisionists, trying to revise things that they don't like. And, I mean, it's um, it's disgusting. It's it's ludicrous, and it's coming from a guy last night, J.D. Vance, who's a Yale 
lawyer, basically, and you got the spin. You got to see what the spin's like from a Yale-educated lawyer, right? Right. right. I mean, that's what they do. That's how they do it. They try to revise it. They try to muddy the water. That's what lawyers basically do. And the other thing was that Walls brought up in in closing here, folks, was that who is going to be the firewall for Donald Trump? It's not going to be J.D. Vance. When Donald Trump goes off the rocker, literally, as he's getting into his 80s here, as he goes off the rocker, and starts doing things that clearly are chaos, hell-bent, and don't make a bit of sense, J.D. Vance is not going to be the firewall. You can't no. rely on J.D. Vance. He's to... all up for himself. No, I mean, what do you think J.D. Vance is going to do when Donald Trump comes up with a crackpot theory of something chaotic that he wants to do, whether it's going out and taking millions of immigrants and trying to figure out who should go back to Mexico or where anywhere, I mean, who's going to who's going to be the firewall on that chaos? Do you think it's going to be J.D. Vance? I mean, who who's no. going to be the firewall? He even called Donald Trump America's Hitler, and now he won't even admit that he called him that. And now he's run, his running mate. It no. doesn't make any sense. Well, now all of a sudden, J.D. Vance thinks Trump's a great guy. Yeah, of course, because it's going to benefit him. Exactly. And folks, it's uh, it's coming up. We're going to try to point as much out as we can going into this. And I don't know what I'm going to do after this. I, I just, uh, I get so belaggered with the whole Trump thing after all of these years. I don't know if I'll continue with these podcasts, but we'll see. We're going to keep hitting it, though, until this election. We're going to keep striking the bell and sounding the alarm on what's going on, folks. And we'll look for you next time around. Right, Jenny? Right. Till then. All right. Have a great day.